Have you ever wondered how kids end up in foster care? So um, it's a really good question. There's actually a lot of different things that happen before kids end up in foster care. So I want to take you guys along to kind of show you the process of how kids end up in foster care in Nebraska. Okay. So usually the first thing that happens is that somebody calls uh, Child Protective Services, which is CPS. Okay. Um, I think they have a different name in different states, but most people know what CPS is. It's called, it's called Child Protective Services. Now, you know, people have all kinds of emotions or evoked when you think of CPS, some super negative, some super positive. It kind of depends on your experience with them. Um, but what CPS is supposed to do is protect children, right? I know that a lot of you can debate that. I can probably debate that to you. Um, but somebody calls CPS and says, hey, you know, there's whatever incidents happening at this house. And if CPS thinks that it's a good idea for them to investigate, they'll send a worker out there to actually go into the home, investigate and see what's going on, okay? So that's the first thing. That's how, um, that's the first step of how kids end up in the foster care system. Now, another way, so that's one way, right? Like CPS gets called, they go to the house, they see if abuse and neglect is happening. The other way is a teacher can call CPS. Actually in Nebraska, everyone is a mandatory reporter. That means that if you're an adult and you see any type of um, suspicious activity going on with a child that's maybe abused or neglect or anything like that, you are required to call CPS, you're a mandatory reporter, okay? It doesn't matter if you work with the state or whatever job you have. As an adult in Nebraska, you're a mandatory reporter. Okay, so that means that in schools, for um, for an example, that's another way that kids end up in the foster care system. A lot of times the teachers are observing things, right? Um, so thank God for teachers who are observant and who can actually see if there's like a bruise on a child or they see like, oh my gosh, I've had this child for a few months now and now they, you know, they're just, they can notice things that are wrong with the kids because they see them every day. So teachers are also um, one of the uh, the adults that, you know, they report to CPS all the time. Um, another um, type of individual that usually calls CPS, I would say doctors, again, because they see babies, they see kids all the time. And so if they see anything suspicious, they're supposed to see something. Again, in Nebraska, though, if you're an adult, it doesn't matter if you're a doctor or a teacher or whatever. If you see something suspicious happening with a kid, you're supposed to call CPS. That's not the same in every state, but in Nebraska, it is. Okay, so CPS gets called. Next thing that happens is they can choose to go investigate the matter, right? Um, and they have all the tiers of kind of like if they think it's like yellow or if it's red or whatever, um, they decide within their own, own internal system whether it's worth investigating. They send somebody out to, to go investigate. And then if they decide that, you know, there's not enough evidence or whatever they find out um, when they go to the house, that's not enough to really like you know, escalate it or take it any further, then um, they just drop it. You know, they're like, well, we don't see that there is anything. Um, now, if it keeps happening and they, the calls keep happening and then they finally have something of substance that get, they can use to say, okay, like these kids are really in danger or something really is happening, then what they do is then they go, they file like an emergency filing with the court and the emergency filing will basically just be like, these are all the things that um, that have been happening so far in this case. This is what we did. This is who we talked to. This is what we observed in the house, blah, 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 blah. They kind of like dump all of the stuff that they've been doing at the house um, in the emergency affidavit. And then there's, and then they say like, because of X, Y, Z, that's in this affidavit, we think that the kids um, need to be removed right away, okay? Um, but before they file that, what they do is most of the time they'll call the police and the police will come and get the kids. And then what the police will do is that they will bring the kids to here in Nebraska and Omaha specifically. It's called Project Harmony. Okay. And so I want to show you guys really quick where Project Harmony is. Um, so Project Harmony is a child advocacy center here in Nebraska. And um, I don't want to say all the kids. I'm going to say a lot of the kids who are uh, removed from their home. Um, probably 99% of them who are removed from their home because of some type of you know abuse or neglect allegations are going to end up here at Project Harmony okay so I'm gonna get out here guys and I'm gonna show you just quickly what kind of this building looks like all right guys so here I am at Project Harmony um, as you can see that sign right back there uh, that's the sign for Project Harmony um, and 
it's just right on like a really busy intersection of the street here in Omaha so I'm gonna show you guys here um, it's a really big building you know they have a lot of stuff going on here they do a lot of classes um, and they train a lot of people in like child advocacy things and so if you want to become like a guardian ad litem or if you want to do anything really that has to do with child advocacy here in Nebraska a lot of some of the classes um, are kind of given here in these buildings so behind me um, you can see all those buildings right there and then they have right behind me there and then there are also buildings on the other side um, and so yeah so that's Project Harmony so abuse and neglect are the two most common ways that kids end up in foster care that people usually know about. There's another way that sometimes will cause the kids to end up in foster care and that is called truancy. Um, it's not all the time. Truancy is when kids are not going to school and most of the time, at least from my experience, they'll keep the kids in the home and just try to work with the family to try to make sure they go to school. I haven't seen a lot of cases where there was truancy and that was all that was going on and the kid got removed, okay? I, I really haven't been a part of any cases like that, but I don't want to say that it never happens because I don't know. Uh, but most commonly, the abuse and neglect is what actually causes the removal from the home. So the kids go to Project Harmony, a doctor gets to examine them, like I said. After CPS kind of figures out what's going on with the case, they hear from the doctor, they didn't make that decision of, okay, are we going to actually, you know, they need to go file with the court and do an emergency removal, and then they need to find a home for the kids to go. So then what they do is they send, um, they put the names of the kids in a big database that all the foster care agencies in Nebraska have access to, so they can see which kids are needing homes. So they'll send out a signal, basically, to the foster care agencies and say, okay, we have Matt, you know, he's six years old, um, this is all we know so far, are any, you know, can any of these foster care agencies take these kids and so then the foster care agencies will present these cases to their foster homes and they'll say hey like we just got this new kid that's in the system they need a home are you guys available so by the time it comes to you if you're a foster parent by the time you get that call all these things have already happened right so that's how kids normally end up in, in foster care now I will say um, I know that in a lot of cases that CPS does try to work with the families informally and what I mean by that is instead of trying to involve involve the court and actually remove the kids from the home um, when, when they go into the home and they do the investigation they kind of assess what's going on they sometimes will decide okay we're just gonna be involved informally we're gonna give you some services that you can participate in voluntarily and if you participate in those services and you're doing well then we're gonna close the case and we're gonna move on, you know? Um, but if they're providing these services and the family is refusing to um, participate in it and the things that are, you know, not really helping the kids keep happening, then at that point, CPS can decide, okay, well, we're gonna now have to file something formally with the court because you're not doing the work that you need to do to make sure that your kids are safe, okay? I actually had a situation like that um, a while ago where, um, what was happening in the home was that the biological mom, she had two kids. Uh, they were, uh, one of them was a teenager. The girl was about 15, 16, and the son was maybe 13, 14. But what was going on is that the kids would fight, but they were like, you know that siblings fight, right? But these kids were violent. They would literally throw each other down the stairs and were sustaining injuries. And the mom wasn't doing anything to stop the kids. Like, you know, like the brother threw uh, his sister down down the stairs and she ended up calling the police because I think she had like, she broke something or bruised something. Um, they were like slapping each other around, like actual violent fights, not just like normal sibling stuff of like, he did this, she did that. It was violence and this was happening and happening. And also there was violence that was being per perpetrated against the biological mom. So like the daughter was really physical. And so if her mom said, no, you can't come um, you know, I don't know, watch a movie with your friends or something like that. She would like lash out at her mom, like get stuff and try to like beat her mom. The mom actually had a um, hospital record. I was on the case. Uh, the mom had a hospital record where um, uh, I think she was like driving. She was taking the daughter to some type of mental health place because she was like, I don't know what to do with you anymore. You're crazy, right? So as she's driving, the daughter takes her shoe and it's like beating the mom over the head with the shoe as the mom is driving over to the hospital. Um, and we had all these records. And so they get to the hospital and the, the daughter actually got checked into a mental place for a while to kind of figure out like what was going on with her. So that's what I'm talking about. It wasn't normal sibling rivalry. It was like crazy, violent sibling rivalry. 
So CPS shows up and they're like, okay, let's give you services to help you. Why don't we go to therapy? Why don't we give your daughter, like maybe she needs to be on medication. Let's find out if there's something like mentally going on with her. And so they just came alongside and tried to help. Well, nothing was getting better. Mom still wasn't doing what she was supposed to do. She kind of went to like one therapy session then decided not to. And there's still violence happening. So what finally caused CPS to remove the kids is that the daughter called the police again one time. And this time there were like bruises. And she was like, I don't want to be in this house anymore. Like, you know, blah, blah, blah. So she's crying. She's like, I want to be out of here. And so CPS finally says like, we've worked with you all this time now and nothing is happening. There should not be that kind of violence between your kids. And you're not really doing anything to help Stop that so for the kids safety we're gonna have to separate them and put them in foster homes so I ended up being appointed to the case and I was actually the attorney for the mom and so let me tell you that was a crazy case but just to show you guys that CPS does try to work with families sometimes I know CPS gets a bad name like I said but they do try to work with families some of them when they think it's appropriate to give them informal services so that they don't have to end up the kids don't have to be taken out of the home so when you hear foster care a lot of times people think or when people hear CPS I should say they think oh my gosh they're the the agency that just removes kids yeah I mean you can debate that really I mean in some instances they're crazy but other times at least from my experience I think sometimes they try to be level-headed not all the time because I can also argue in some of my cases that they were too quick to remove the kids you know so it's kind of like eh. um but anyway my point was that they do offer informal services when the family is able to meet those and they kind of get out of their lives if the families are not able to then that's when it escalates okay and then it ends up in court and then the kids actually get physically removed from the family and gets put in foster care okay so in a nutshell that's how kids end up in foster care here in Nebraska but I want to know from you um, do you know how kids end up in foster care in your state and if there's one thing you can change about the foster care system in your state what would it be all right now for those of you who are wanting to really understand uh, what's foster care adoption foster parenting like what's this foster care stuff if you click this video right here um, I just talk about the differences between foster care foster to adopt and foster care adoption because those are three very different things that confuses people a lot so if you're kind of curious about the foster care system more like if you want to adopt how to do that that video there is going to be um, really really helpful for you okay now please take a minute to subscribe to my channel to get more amazing content like this be sure that you like this video and also click that bell button to be notified when i post a new video every week all right thanks for watching guys bye, -bye.